Hello viewers, welcome to Top Notch Online TV. With you today is none other than Teacher Fidelis from Alliance High School. I'm a teacher of English, an author and an editor. With me today, I have Teacher Rispa. She's from PCA Kikuyu High School. She's a teacher of English, an author and of course an examiner. As students at home, we still have a discussion using uh, the music book a silent song and other stories. So far, we have looked at four stories. So ensure that you subscribe to our channel. Uh, go back and look at the episodes where we covered the three uh, or the four first stories. And today we shall be looking at the silent song or a silent song. When you talk about the uh, this story, this is the story that is taking up the title of the book, A Silent Song. So when we look at these uh, stories, just as we have done in other stories, we shall be looking at the plot summary, we shall look at the characters in the book and the themes. So to start off, we shall be looking at the plot summary and Teacher Rispa will take us through. Thank you for joining us, viewers. Uh, when I'm looking at A Silent, a silent Song, First of all, I'll talk about what is said about silence. Mm -hmm. Silence is golden. Silence speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is it about silence. Then on to the story, a silent song. Looking at the title of the story, the story is the one that bears the major title of our short stories. It is talking about a silent song and other stories. And then I look at the combination of the words, silent and song. Looking at silent and the word song, it comes out as an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. uh, two conflicting ideas. How can you be silent and at the same time you are singing? Mm -hmm. Now, into, uh, into the understanding of our story, a silent song is a story about Mbane. And Mbane has been having some kind of reflection about his life. He is silently reflecting over his life. A number of times and when something is done over and over it almost becomes a song yeah. that is it about a silent a silent song the relevance of the title a reflection on Bane's life now who is Bane? Bane is a person who is physically handicapped we are looking at a person who is blind as well as crippled Another thing we are being told about Mbane is that Mbane used to be a beggar in the streets of Nairobi. A Silent Song is a story by Leonard Kibira, a story that emanates from Kenya. Mine is to take you through the plot analysis of the story. The plot analysis, what exactly is happening in the story? What do we need to understand about the story? That is it about uh, my, my role for today. I'll break this story into a number of episodes. I'll take the episodic approach. The first episode, I'll be talking about Mbane's illness. As the story unfolds, we are meeting Mbane. As I had earlier said, he is blind as well as a cripple. He had been living in the streets of Nairobi until when his, uh, he had been living in the streets of Nairobi as a beggar until when the brother rescued him and took him to his place. The first episode that you had mentioned that it is about Bane's illness. How much is Bane ailing? Maybe from the illustrations in the book, we are seeing that Bane, first of all, he is bedridden. A bedridden a person is someone who is extremely sick, a person who is not able to get out of bed. Apart from Bane being bedridden, to show the extent of his illness, we also see that he is poor of health. He is crawling on his knees and his elbow. Yeah. He is almost incapacitated when it comes to his movement. Mm -hmm. uh, still on Mbane's uh, sickness, illness, we have been told that he had sharp pangs that were causing him a lot of discomfort, a lot of, a lot of pain. And the, when the pain would come, Mbane would withstand the pain, mm -hmm. but then he says, not for long, because yeah, the pains would it recoil would and then come back with a small, severe attack. Yeah. We are able now to conclude Mbane is extremely ill mm -hmm. as he is be being bedridden mm -hmm. in a house belonging to the brother. In fact, we are being told it is flea infested. Yeah. We also see some element of poverty mm -hmm. that the place he is being hosted in their hut, mm -hmm. it is a flea infested. I go to the second episode. What else about this story? We also want to understand about the second episode, I'll call it, Mbane's life in his brother's house. Mm -hmm. From what you're learning is, 
the brother, his name was Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Yes. The brother Ezekiel was a preacher, first of all. And the brother, he had felt the need to rescue Bane from the streets of Nairobi. And when he, he rescued Bane, his main aim was to convince Bane that he should receive Christ so that he may, uh, he may sit to heaven. Yeah. The brother believes that if he does not receive Christ, Bane will not end up uh, okay, going to heaven. And uh, he keeps reminding Bane constantly, I rescued you from that harsh life so that you can see the Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're even seeing that the brother in rescuing Bane, mm -hmm. he had a mission. Yeah. Another thing is uh, when he's living in that brother's house, we are seeing that he describes the environment, the, uh, the environment as being, uh, he's describing the environment as being silent. Yeah. There's some kind of serenity in that environment. As much as it's serene, there's also some element of suspicion. Yes. There's also some suspicion in the brother's recent silence. Mm -hmm. The brother has been silent for quite a, uh, some time. And when someone is silent, it communicates a lot. Now Bunny is starting to think, what might be in my brother's plans? Why is he suddenly that quiet? That is what you're seeing about Bunny's life in his brother's house. Mm -hmm. His brother's house is also in the rural Still on his brother's home, we cannot move away without mentioning that his wife had, a, his brother, sorry, mm -hmm. his brother had a wife by the name of Sarah, mm -hmm. and Sarah used to take care of Bane. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah was the one who used to administer some bitter herbs. She's the one who comes, she's the one who slowly raises his head carefully. At the same time, you are seeing that she's being very careful in the way she handles Bane, mm -hmm. and she's the one who is giving him the bitter herbs. And at the same time, she's encouraging him to swallow, encouraging him that God will, God will see you through. That is it about the brother's home. We go to our third episode. What about the streets? About the streets, we are learning through the streets through a flashback. Yeah. When you're meeting Bunny, Bunny has already been rescued from the streets. But then there's an element of the streets that he misses it. He reflects back on the streets with some kind of nostalgia. Yeah. He misses the life of the streets. How much can we say about the lives of the lives of the streets? Mm -hmm. About the lives of the streets, we see that Mbane used to be silent over there. He didn't have any friends. Mm -hmm. He used to live in a certain corner. Mm -hmm. He used to depend on well wishers giving him alms. Arms is the kind of help we give to the poor. They used to give him it in, in, in form of some copper coins. In other words, translated, they used to give him some money. That is how he used to survive in the streets. Yeah. And the way that he lacked uh, sight, he could only, uh, he could only uh, rely on his observation and his sense of feeling to be able to tell about the environmental around him. We are being told... He couldn't tell much of a gay morning, yeah. that happiness in the morning. Yeah. He couldn't tell much about the sunrise, mm -hmm. the sunset, because he does not have sight. That is it about the street. But still, what kind of people did Mbane used to interact with in the streets? Mm -hmm. First of all, he is referring to them as the good men and women. Yes. Who are these good men and women? The good men and women uh, were the people who used to work in the building next to where Mbane used to a set camp and borrow money. At the same time, there used to be people who worked in the uh, streets yeah. along where he used to camp. Mm -hmm. he, he calls them the good men and women. And then he tries to justify the behaviors of these good men and women. He said, there were good men and women just, dr uh, just turned drunk mm -hmm. to enjoy their hard-earned earnings. Now you're learning about the good men and women. They used to work during the day. And then during the night, the the pimps the, there's the mention of the pimps and the whores yeah. the pimps and the prostitutes that used to capitalize on their hard earnings the the pimp are these people who give out women you have to pay them for you to engage with a certain prostitute mm -hmm. and the prostitute you know the prostitute you not know, the prostitute you really don't need to explain they are these women who sell themselves their bodies for money at and then when it was done the pimps and the and the sluts they would recoil and now during the morning they would go to sleep. Mm -hmm. During the night they'll come and capitalize on the money of the good men and women. And we are being told that there was the element of the nightlife. During the nightlife, because Bane cannot see, all he could hear were broken beer bottles. Yeah. Then there was shouting and all. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the kind of uh, 
engagement when these people were turning drunk during the night. Another thing, there's something that has been made, uh, there's something that has been criticized. The Christians have been criticized. Yeah. Whenever they are going to church uh, during Christmas, they would look at Mbane, some of them would decide, let's give him some alms, let's give him some donation in terms of mm -hmm. the few coins. Yeah. But others would be judgmental upon him. Mm -hmm. They'll be saying, you are able, you are just being a person who is accustomed to borrowing. They would mm -hmm. pronounce judgment upon him. Yeah. And Mbane is very critical of him. He says, instead of these people bringing me the good the good word of the Lord, yeah. they are busy criticizing Mbane. Mm -hmm. That is it about the third episode that you are calling the street life. Mm -hmm. Then you are going to our final episode that we shall be calling Mbane's Hopelessness and Death. Mbane's Hopelessness and Death has been captured in the manner that when the brother is asking him, do you believe in God? Mbane says, I don't know. And then he starts to remember his mother was also a religious person. Yeah. And the way the mother used to describe God, that God is whiteness. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can talk about holy. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, he looks at his sight. And when he's looking at his sight, his lack of sight, and also being crippled, his kind of misfortune kind of life, yeah. he does not see the need for God. That brings out his hopelessness. And then there's something about Mbane that is running through his mind, the one that you're calling a song. Yeah. Something that runs through your mind over and over, it becomes like your song. We are looking at Mbane. Mbane is wishing for death as a form of escape from his, this kind of his miserable yeah. life. We finally see that even at a certain place, he talked about the souls will be raised. Mm -hmm. His hope is in the life after death. Mm -hmm. The life I'm having right now mm -hmm. is not um, of much good to me. But then maybe when I die and my soul is risen, mm -hmm. maybe I'll have another another That's second chance at life. Yeah. And finally, we're seeing that the brother is trying to force Bane. Mm -hmm. Bane, get saved, uh, give your life to the Lord. And then Bane is very honest. He tells him, I'm not sure. I believe in God. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we, sing, we are seeing that Bane looks like he, he, life, uh, his soul is leaving his body. Mm -hmm. But as the soul is leaving the body, Bane is smiling. Mm -hmm. We're wondering what is so good about dying. This guy has found a relief in death. When he is dying, the brother and the wife can observe that the guy was smiling. Mm -hmm. When they feel his pulse, when they feel his forehead, life has left Bane's body, but then he did it as he was smiling. What could you tell from that? You're telling that Bane gained some kind of relief from death. His silent song has finally been answered. He is now free from all the pain. He is now free from all the suffering. That is it about the story about a silent song. Thank you so much, teacher Rispa. And students at home, at least know you can say something about uh, the silent song and when we look at a silent song I'm so happy with the explanation that the teacher has given because we're looking at the main character this is Mbane and the moments that he has and you see number one you can either look at the moments that he has in the city mm -hmm. you see he has no friends he has no one to talk to so he has he's in fact looking at the story he says that he's accustomed to being alone and talking to himself through his own thoughts. Mm -hmm. So even as he is in uh, Ezekiel's heart, he, he looks at Ezekiel and Ezekiel is quiet and he's thinking, okay, uh, he doesn't expect me to talk fast because I'm accustomed to just being silent. Mm -hmm. So using that explanation, and thank you so, uh, thank you so much, teacher Rispa, we get to know the meaning of the title because we said, as we discuss these stories, we shall be looking at the title uh, the plot summary as well as the themes. So it is very important for the students to understand the meaning of a silent song. And uh, our teacher has talked about an oxymoron mm -hmm. because you're looking at a silent song. If you're singing, then we should be in a position to hear you. Mm -hmm. But now looking at Mbane, this is a, a lonely man who is so hopeless that he doesn't have anyone uh, to talk to. If you're looking at Mbane in the bubbly city, mm -hmm. the broken bottles, the people having fun, uh, the Christians who are singing the Christmas carols and everything, but he's in his own space, in his own silence, and it becomes something that he, he's accustomed to every day. So uh, I won't go through what the teacher has said, but at least you understand uh, what we have discussed. And with that, I want us to talk about the themes in a silent song. And as we discussed earlier, when we're looking at the themes, then we're looking at the characters and the episodes. 
that we have in the story so that when you look at the episodes that the teacher has talked about then out of that and uh, maybe how the characters interact with each other then we come up with the themes in the story and to start off we have religious hypocrisy remember what we said about hypocrisy this is pretense mm -hmm. when you talk about a christian these are people who purport to be christ-like mm -hmm. we expect them to be caring uh, you know, to have empathy, mm -hmm. to sympathize with other people, but this is not what is happening in the story. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, instance that we look at is Ezekiel. This is Mbane's um, brother, who is a devoted preacher. And he talks about saving Mbane from the streets of Nairobi and bringing him to the heart. And when he does this, it's, it's too late, because mm -hmm. first of all, Mbane is so sick, He's been uh, he's bedridden and he cannot even move. And when we see him moving, he's just crawling mm -hmm. on his elbows and his yes. knees, mm -hmm. and he's in so much pain. So, as a Christian, if you want to help someone, then you should have done it before it is too late. Then the second uh, thing we look at when Ezekiel actually now saves Mbane and brings him home. What does he do? He's not even concerned about uh, how Mbane is, the way he's sick and the kind of pain that he's having. He's just concerned about Mbane now uh, accepting Christ as his savior. And at one point we see uh, we see Ezekiel asking uh, Mbane, do you know about Jesus Christ? Mbane says, I don't know him. And what is the response that you get from Ezekiel? He says that you are worse than Judas. Mm, you're selfish. Clearly, this is a person who is not empathetic. He's not concerned about Mbane's uh, situation. Now, the next thing we look at, when uh, Mbane was in the streets, he's talking about the good people, the Christians in this aspect. When you look at page 19, mm -hmm. you'll see that information. They were just singing uh, their hallelujah, uh, dancing, and when he thought about these people, he thought that they would talk to him about the gospel of, of the good word, or, or the good word, right? But what they do, they give him some cash, uh, just some copper coins, mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, what they say, and I'll read, uh, some good Christian men and women would curse and call him able-bodied, mm -hmm only crippled every day by the idleness of leisurely begging. Mm. This is on page 19. You think he's doing it leisurely? Leisurely. Yeah. Yet he's able-bodied. Mm. So again, now looking at our religion, when you purport to be like Christ, we expect mm. that you should have that heart uh, that should be willing to care and give to the, uh, to the people who don't have anything. And in this case, we're looking at Mbani as a beggar in the streets of uh, Nairobi. But uh, you see you see what the Christians do? They call him um, an able-bodied uh, beggar, in this case, who is just, uh, just idle. Mm -hmm. Then when you look at all this situation, it just makes um, Bane uh, delve into self-pity and bitterness because he feels like if the Christians can't help me, then uh, I'm not of any use in this uh, whole world. And lastly, when we look at this theme, then we can talk about a situation whereby um, Bane thinks about God as being a white cleanliness, right? So if you're talking about God, then you're talking about light. And then Bane says, uh, what is the use of light to a blind man? Because for Mbane, since he's blind, the only thing that he can see is darkness. Mm -hmm. It's only darkness. He can't see anything beyond that. So in a way, he feels like um, now the, the gospel and the god of religion is just for a number of people, maybe the Christians, but mm -hmm. not people like him who are uh, blind. Okay, so that's it on uh, religious hypocrisy. The next thing we look at is pain and misery of the physically handicapped, and we are still looking at Mbane. Now, when Mbane lived in the Babli city, you see, he was in a situation whereby everything was happening. Uh, the people are having fun. Uh, the people are, uh, the teacher has talked about uh, the workers of the night, quote unquote. They would go out there, have fun. But when you look at Mbane, he didn't enjoy this, you know. The joy was there, but it was unreachable to him. And what he did, he would just recoil into the back street and sleep there unsheltered. But he undisturbed. didn't 
undisturbed but unsheltered. Yes. So you're looking at someone who is um, in, a, in a situation that is quite uh, sad mm -hmm. because he doesn't have a shelter. The life of the city is bubbly, but he can't uh, he can't enjoy this life. When you look at Mbane now in Ezekiel's heart, what do we see? This is a heart that is in a desolate situation mm -hmm. since the flock is uh, flea ridden. Yeah? Then uh, looking at this, we see uh, him suffering. So we're looking at misery. He's sick. When Sarah, now Ezekiel's wife, tries to give some medication, uh, some medication to Mbane, he keeps uh, having these pangs of pain, and he knows that it, it's just a matter of time, and the pain would come back again. So we see that attack going through his body. So on to our last theme, we shall be looking at hopelessness. And of course, we're looking at Mbane. This is a person who had lost hope. Uh, and we can use a number of instances in the story where we see him uh, losing hope. Number one, when we look at Mbane, uh, he says that he only knew he was 14 years. He was told once mm -hmm. that he was 14 years old. And when he looks at his brother Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel was married, he had a fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. And he had thought that maybe in a, in a way he would get that fulfilled, uh, fulfilled life. But when he looks at his um, uh, blindness, he just saw darkness and he knew that at no point would he have a life like his brother's. Then uh, when we see uh, Mbane in the heart and uh, Sarah was just giving him some medication, we see that Sarah just leaves shortly after and uh, he tells him, we hope that God will help you. But he knows there was no hope for him. Otherwise, we would have seen uh, Sarah just uh, staying there with him and uh, trying to make him feel better. So he, he knew that there was no hope for him. The next thing that we can talk about, we see uh, when Ezekiel now comes to the hut and uh, he just sits there silently without talking to Mbane. Mbane in his uh, thoughts thought that at this point, even my brother uh, doesn't have anything to say to me because all uh, hope is uh, lost. Now he just, the only thing that mattered to Mbane was the eternal life. He just uh, thought about uh, the life after death, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, he just thought about the time whereby he would just die and he would be free of the pain that he was having. And uh, we are told in the book that the only thing he could see was the bitter limits of darkness. So in his blind state, he still didn't have hope uh, of a better future. And uh, a couple of these now with his ailments. This is a person who is so hopeless. Uh, lastly, we can look at um, when he sat at the pavement, when he was still at the streets, when he sat at the pavement, he, he just thought about his journey's end. He did not think about his future. He didn't see a life ahead of him. So even as he sat there begging, he just thought about his uh, demise. He thought that, okay, um, I'm someone who can't see, I'm crippled. Uh, then he gets sick and the only thing he could think about uh, was his death and he thought about his soul being free from um, the incarcerated body that was full of sweat and everything. And of course, now we're looking at this person being hopeless. And even in his deathbed, and even in his deathbed, when we look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel just wants him to be baptized. Um, when we look at our story here, we see that when a person is in his you know, deathbed, mm -hmm. The last thing that the other people want is for him to be baptized because they believe that now this person will go to heaven when he dies. And in that aspect, again, we're looking at hopelessness. Even uh, the brother Ezekiel thought at this point, there's nothing that we can do for Mbane. We're just waiting for his death. And upon dying, we see, um, we see him smiling because now his soul was free uh, from pain. And, and that was it about um, Mbane. So students at home looking at these of course now we have looked at the plot summary of this story and we have looked at the number of themes in our next episode ensure that you watch because we shall be looking at the character traits and of course as usual we shall be looking at one aspect uh, or maybe one question from the story a silent song and using these you've been in a position to answer your essay questions in english paper three so up until next time it's a goodbye from us goodbye Bye.